and back. Okay, 100 for repairing of uh, an engine. Speak and span. The engineers replace the damaged pressure lines and give your engine a thorough service. Your stalkers breathe a sigh of relief. Nectar for Magdalene's. Actually, have some nectar and Magdalene's is on the way. Munitions for Port Prosper. Uh, but is it for Windward Company? Uh, like... Yeah, sure, it's for Windward Company, but the thing is... I don't really... I brought them down to zero. Nothing happened. Might as well just to uh, trade with them. It doesn't seem to to uh, to do any effect. Okay, I can sell wood. Already have three gourds of. Uh, Nectar, could sell cage catch. Uh, what else? Tea. Guess I'll leave tea.
kingship with rats. Uh, London's rats are persistent and ingenious. They are not well spoken, but they are at least spoken. They are also marvelously skilled engineers. A secret symposium in a midnight lecture hall, a cadre of masked experts gathered to present papers on a subject the ministry had forbidden. You unlock this by having affiliation academic at two or more. Traditious nightmares. Which I kinda want to uh, save, but at the same time I need veils for... Uh, what was it? More hidden compartments? Right now I have... 61, and if I get that, I actually will have 66. Hmm. And I, and I, and I buy, can buy them. At the same time, they are not that good. They cost 1,300, give quarters, and two hidden compartments. So I don't even know if I want to buy them. Oh, uh... Mm, never mind. Let's go with this. Uh, it's still going to be useful. Prohibited theories were shared. Research partnerships born. You continue to correspond in code on the matters debated. What was the topic of uh, the symposium? A forensic assessment of the sun's remains, the condemned classics, and International perspective. Yeah, sounds sounds remains uh, sounds more interesting. Following the following London's relocation, the new astronomy has become a crucial, well-funded discipline. But the fate of uh, physiology of Albion's dead sun are strictly barred from study. It looks different, what the fuck? <laughs> it was veils, now it's uh, this. Okay, uh, gotta go to a toilet, be right back.
and then back. Citizen Freeman turns into a stealth pipe lover. I guess we could do a second class again. That is a good opportunity. Seven nectar for six hundred. Okay, that works too, I guess. They needed three munition crates. I brought them a bit too much. Going to go straight to uh, Walbury.
much better weapon, much easier to fight it. And I have more range with this too. A deranged dreadnought is defeated. I think I wrote down it uh, at some point, but then a uh, crash happened and uh, got lost. Deranged dreadnought. The mirror cracked. The chambers of the dreadnought have become an extent death trap. Silvers of glass, slivers of glass fall from ceilings. Vertified walls shatter as you pass, exposing you to the sky and its wind-blown shards. You are, uh, you are forced to turn back with the. Only a few larger fragments that might fetch some sovereign support. Oh, nobody died. Just 10 terror. Hell of terror. 33 sovereigns. Stove pipe nameplate plus terror. I need one stained glass for the last two. Uh -oh. Ministry. to give me the same reward as they gave me with uh, the other mission I'm going to be pissed
Gregory goes to plan and arrives on time. You carry the honey through the wolvery mists to an isolated bar near the shore. An enterprising villain is establishing a honey den. The animals are gone and their stalls have been draped with the red velvet. This all, it all still smells of straw. Well, same re reputation. Uh, a little bit more sovereigns, but wasn't worth it. I should do easier ones. And I have 10,000! Buy that luxurious ship. Fucking hell. <laughs> Game doesn't like when I'm happy. What? No, it's caged catch? Fuck. Rises from below, seeping through the wooden slats of the dock. The crowds waiting in the queue begin to sing. A watery, ululating tune of no discernible melody. Like lullabying. Howl or wail as an expression of strong emotion, typically grief. Ululating. Uh, join the song, offer sanctuary aboard your train, sell protective talismans to the crowd. Most of those who queuing are unsettled by the mist. A few are frantic with terror. This would be a good uh, recru recruitment opportunity. Oh, well, let's try to sell specimen. Really, one hundred for three uncanny specimen. Yeah. Little profit. The crowd snaps up your guaranteed protections against the transformative properties of the mist. Customers squeeze their talismans tight as the mist grows deeper. For yourself, you prefer the cozy, mist free confines of your cabin, watching it slowly recede. I'm going to read that, it's just a waste of breath. A tiny lane bedecked with shops. A bubble of shops and stalls sear the gaze with bold mismatched colors. The barber smiles at uh, you with uh, too many teeth. Shave and a nick? He asks. Though his shop is lushly appointed, crushed velvet and uh, decadently papal 
aesthetic. Aesthetic. It is conspicuously empty. He notes your glance and uh, crestfallen offers to sell you a story instead. Well, I'm not going to do pondering with hearts. Consider the strangeness of the lanes. The lanes do not appear as uh, advertised, but all of all their scenes, that uh, that one is the least phantasmagoric. It is most likely the smiles, maybe carnivore expressions, sir. Syrupy and gleaming, faultless mirrors of the courtier, this dazzling grin. Or maybe it is the second rate souvenirs cobbled from haberdashery and children's nightmares. The arsenic aftertaste of the candy floss, the wine wild uh, quality of the local perfumes. Her perfumes could be anything, could just be your insecurities, the air of your existence. Whatever the case, the lanes continue their watch, politely, of course. Back again. Uh, the bedragged parson paces across his stage, lit up from behind by his reverence, his uh, conviction in the sutras of his speech. Sutras. Sutras. Indian literary traditions refers to a aphorism or a collection of aphorisms in the form of manual or more broadly a con Condensed manual of her text. Is it even fits this <laughs> sentence to use Indian aphorism word? Here is a man assured in his precise place in the universe. And the next Tuesday, a baptism at the mists. All those looking to experience a closer connection with they who must grieve, come down to shore. on the right, you lean over to whisper to a diminutive old woman, her hair swaddled in gold filigree. Upon closer inspection it becomes evident that it isn't uh, hair that sits atop her skull, but thousands of delicate cilia. Eyelashes. <laughs> uh, 
still, aside from that one anomaly, the woman... How do you even... see a difference between hair and eyelashes? It's still hair. Unless it's a hair on your eyelids, basically. Still, aside from that one animality, the woman seems normal and generous with her attention. I like coming here. The Parsons got the good heart. No idea what he's trying to say sometimes, but he's got a good heart. He wants us to rise up, rise beyond who we are and what we are. We've just got to give ourselves to they who must grieve. That's how I got this. She strokes her hair in the mist. She leans in. But honestly, I am only here because of the person's a pretty one. Talk to the cultist on your left. To your left. You share a quick dialogue with the restless seeming individual of indeterminable age, gender and species. Yeah, you, you can't determine species, of course. Hello. They burble gently at you, their, their voice like a chorus of rooks. You are new. When they speak, you can see that they do not, in fact, have tongues, but a mouth like uh, the inside of an intestine, uh, soft with pale villi. Perhaps that is why they sound the way they do. The burrow does not like me in Woolbridge's the mare. They don't even like me in the off season but i have seen they who must grieve and i will remember that they always i transformed my body my mind my heart the the dragged parson stands wait is this new stands before his people palms raised he clears his throat but before the parturition of the first syllable, officials from the Bureau of Entertainment swarm into the chapel howling like blood-drunk wolves. An unexpected intrusion. There is a little resistance from the congregation, merely an affected resignation. resignation. The officers from the Bureau of Entertainment are civil as they evict the crowd. Once they've uh, surmised that you do not belong, they, the officers leave you largely alone, occupying themselves instead with the task of extric extricating the parishioners. parishioners. Uh, the bedragged parson's disciples cooperate with the only minimal contempt, moving where they are told, answering questions when they are asked. In, all in all, a courteous disruption. Can, who's that? Rictus? Come on then, let's go, let's go. The Rictus smiles of the officers are in identical in their splendor as is uh, the ex ex -qui? what i need help Is it from exquisite? Exquite. Exquiteness. What the fuck? Exquisiteness. Oh. Exquisiteness. 
of their uniforms, the oiled shine of their dark hair. The Bureau of Entertainment is the branch of the Ministry of Public Decency responsible for the well-being and upkeep of Walbury Jackstamare. They take their duty seriously. Bought from the officials? Uh, there are too busy pummeling parishioners to listen. You sh you'll surely be able to explain soon. So this you flee from the Bureau of Entertainment and Forcers who are quite naturally ag aghast by your audacity. This is not Worldbury as you know it. This without glitz, glamour or single tourist firing yourself. The horse lies proud under a sky now cataract with milky nebula. Now of the familiar constellations are in sight and every building's a bone node to the marrow. Despite the dilapidation the place bustles with grim activity and the smell, the coying patrescence of it, a stink of hay and fecal matter, brined with the miasma of dead marine life, cooper and fresh bread. So it's called off season. This uh, other side of a uh, other time of a uh, city life. Uh, Mare has become a corpse. The rundown bones of its forgotten attractions swarm with with bedragged men and women all armed with cleaning equipment. This is where the workers of Worldbury live and labor to create the gaudy frontage seen by tourists. The beach is now a decaying mess, visited only by the cultists who tend the chapel there. To linger here you'll need to work, but labor is poorly paid. Take other workers' jobs too of often and they'll firmly encourage you to depart so I'm, I'm living in the city now okay um feed the lanes feed the kitchens feed, feed the kitchens of the lanes how else do you ex expect them to satisfy customers the transform filth to fine dining. The act of feeding the lanes is actually quite manual. Once you become accustomed to the slick dots, the way they tendrils across your hands in pursuit of big tool it really becomes quite boring in one and out uh, presumably the other uh what the fuck is lanes am i literally uh feeding roads A division of a road marked off with painted lines. Maybe that? No. 
not sure what's going on. Go for a walk along the beach. You can scarcely see the beach in the off season, so dense are the mists beneath your feet. Something crunches and cracks. Mare is shattered beams and broken stone, and the beach is a stretch of filth clotted in stinking clumps. Even here, the there is work to be done. You could assist. Just increasing terror. Can I do a port report on this part of the town? If you become popular with the ministry, this option will close. The bedragged parson issued you an invitation. No reason to be rude. This chapel lies on the beach, at the edge of the mist. It is weft tendons and yellowing bone, and the pews muscle cured in salt. It's amazing how spacious this place is, given the exterior. From the outside it looks like just another corpse washed, washed uh, onto the shore. A word with Parson agreed to a request to recruit for the code. Well, let's talk first, I guess. Finally, a gash in the crowd. You go up to speak with the Parson. His voice is water, warm, hypnotic. They were kind to you. The bed-dragged parson says abruptly and without vitriol, only a pale wonder, eyes fever warm under the wilds of his hair. It is all he stands. He was he talking about the officials from the Bureau of Entertainment or someone else? Find them, he warbles. Find them, find the lonely, the broken hearted, the barely breathing, the ones who think this port could ever save them. Find them, find them about the day who must grieve, about us, about how love can turn in the heart like a key and open the soul to the universe. Speak to them of change. Tell them. Tell them. The words seep from the bedragged parson, tie themselves into gibberish nonsense sounds like a spill of cold water on glass. For minutes he is in coed. In coat. Mm, just began and so not fully formed or developed. Okay. Ben, you need clothes. The cultists cram you into second-hand finery, shabby but serviceable. Now you are suitably attired, they bundle you across the off-season and through a door to Worldbury. The membrane blocking it shivers and 
twitches reluctantly, allowing you to pass through. Timed tingles on your skin for several minutes after your arrival. So I'm in tourist section. It's not a certain timer. It's just different parts of the city, or what? I really don't understand what the fuck is going on. Gather new members for the cult. Gather new members for the cult. Go to the office of the Bureau of Entertainment. Here you will be able to betray the cult and forge a different. Alliance, just entering the office is not the betrayal, however. Slide across the, to the off season. Take a donkey ride. Okay, well, my chances of getting someone recruited with the hearts are really low. You will only lose your vision of heavens if you fail. Grief waits from their lashes. The, these poor souls will be persuaded if only you can make them listen. You'll need to start when in Enthralling tale with enthralling tales then drop to a, the personal. A man, a woman, teenagers, lanky as hounds, a couple too old for the weight of their years. They listen to the sutras and scriptures of transformation you repeat. Their entire bodies poured into the act. Something in the words sing to them and one by one, they say yes, yes, and yes again, just creaked in their reverence. You give them directions to the code's headquarters and pat on the shoulders. They receive your attention with the gratitude of children. Yes, join the codes. Can I just continue? Having fun here. Uh, donkey ride. So, do I need to slide? To the off season before my clothes are in tatters or well let's let's test it out oh no I can go back you tell a pass passerby a story they did not expect it something raw profoundly and I'll audaciously private. They gasp and the air jumps. He rises into a door like a wicker tunnel strung with airy lights. You dash through and the air feels membranous, stinks of burning wire. It is a wall of macos, two feet thick and calls your eyes in oil slick rainbows. The hell is that? So passerby, I tell him some personal secrets for no reason, and then some kind of portal opens, I jump through and that's how you jump between seasons? She's just kind of dumb. Uh, go for a walk.
Report the results of your recruitment mission. The bedragged person will likely wish to be notified of your success. Uh, thank you, says bedragged person. Tone milk mild. He gestures in inflection of the hand that draws the eye to a swathe of new faces. Each tendril haired, paraffin pale and without expression. Uh, then one laughed jerkily, fingers picking at their chewed down hems, and uh, it becomes clear who they are. They who must grieve is soothed by their presence, as they are by their contact with the Numinous. A susurrant echo that perishes repeating his every word. Contact with the new Minus. Supernatural. Numinous. Having a strong religious or spiritual quality in the Hating or suggesting the presence of divinity. Well, yeah, not really. Um, spiritual quality. Agree to visit the Avid Horizon. Not enough, not enough, the bedragged parson warbles. They need more, we need more. He and unrolls sheets of bellum. Papyrus? Find parchment made originally from uh, the skin of a calf. Okay. Uh, their surfaces vernix slick and in intagliod with elegant, if mildly tentacular, handwriting. My poor, poor children, they are unhappy, they listen but they do not understand, they cannot understand, they are deafened by their own grief, broken, bent to the noise of their own hearts, I cannot reach them. The bedragged parson shakes his head as he offers you a stack of paper. Take these in the vid horizon, find the displeased, they might assist my flock, find these guides, they psych bombs <laughs> of British suffering, give them these and ask them to come here. It's just, sounds like made up words, psych Pomps, psycho pomps. Psycho pomps. Uh, in Greek, Greek mythology, a guide of souls to the place of the dead. Psycho pomps. Uh, so basically, like a Greek. Ancient Greek variant of uh, not clair not, not clairvoyant. How do you call them? Uh, speak with the dead. Ugh. Doing seances.
so what's the point of me staying here? Why do I need to work? Or why would I want to linger? There's nothing to do here. still get through. Let's do break and recording. 